But I want you to see secondly, is that Ruth is a single lady. She's a young lady. She's attractive. And her mother-in-law says, Ruth, um, girl, you got to get married. She's like, well, nobody's proposing. And Naomi tells her this. She says, uh, why don't you go to Boaz and propose to him? <laughs> so girls, I'm going to give you a permission and freedom in here today. Okay? Because we have some Boazes, okay, who are slow asses. <laughs> And, and they need a little push sometimes. Now, if you are 18 and below this, for next two minutes, I want you to completely forget. May God give you amnesia. Forget everything I said. But anybody who is older than that, and you already have a car, and you already have a job, I want you to see that something is happening. Where Ruth comes to Boaz, it's night. Now, this is not a good thing to do during this culture, but in this culture, it was fine. She comes during the night. The homeboy is sleeping. She comes, she lays next to him. Okay, that's what her mother-in-law says. So if your mom says that to do that, check it with your pastor first. But, <laughs> but the, the mother-in-law says, go lay next to him. She lays next to him. There was nothing inappropriate that happened. The guy got pretty cold. He's looking for a blanket. He's realizing a woman is laying next to him. And this is what I want you to see. They could have quickly made out. They could have quickly had a little thing going. A little fling going. And Ruth looks at him and says, listen, uh, just want to give you a heads up, single, ready to mingle. I see you're single too. Your status hasn't changed on Facebook. Um, what do you think about taking this nice lady out for a date? And Boaz says, you really would like want to go on a date with me? Yeah, I've been waiting, been giving the signals. <laughs> Didn't you get it? And Boaz says, well, you know what? This is great. I, I would love to actually go out with you, marry you right here on the spot. But by the way, there is a guy that's, because they have a tradition where you can't just marry a widow. The, the closest to the family has to marry the widow first. And if he declines it, then somebody else needs to come in and marry. And he says, as much as I like you, you're attractive, you're young, uh, you, you fit, I click. I mean, I feel that in my heart, but I got to go talk to the elders. I want you to see this about Boaz. He did not let his passion dictate his principles. He let the principles regulate his passion. That means if he's hot, that does not mean that, well, he's not Christian. It doesn't matter, he's hot. Hell is hot too. You don't want hell. But, but you don't understand, she can change. No, 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 no. You can't, you can't let your passion dictate your life. You got to let the principles of God control your passion. Are you with me, church? And, and Boaz, as much as he liked Ruth, he says, I got to check with the elders. I got to check with the principles of God. And when the principles of God checked out, eventually Boaz married. Never, if you, you will always make a mistake in your dating life. And you will lose your purity if you let your passion take the driver's seat. Because passion, a lot of times, is another word for lust. But if you let the passion go into school of your principles and if that passion does not pass the school of your principles then the passion has to be kicked out and say you know what this is not for me why because i'm not going to compromise my principles for somebody i'm attracted to for somebody i have a crush on or for somebody that makes me feel like little butterflies in my stomach Come on. is somebody with me right now see a lot of people are struggling with purity young people are struggling with purity for this reason because you can never be pure outside of your principles listen to this very carefully I'm gonna share with you a secret purity only exists when you honor your standards when you step over your standards you can pray until your veins pop you will never be pure because purity is God's gift for honoring your standards and girls guys you have to have standards you have to make up those standards before a boy shows up. You have to have those standards before the girl shows up. You can't let somebody else make up those standards for you. You can't, let, you can't let Kardashians make up standards for you. You can't let your friends make up standards for you. You can't let the culture. You got to make up the standards that are in line with God's word before anybody shows up. Can I get a witness in this place? And you got to understand that when you stand within, when you stand for your standards, something happens. Purity is automatic. But the moment you step over your standards, this is what's going to happen. You're going to find yourself pregnant. 
You're gonna find yourself losing your virginity. You're gonna find yourself heartbroken. You're like, man, I thought you loved me when he only wanted to get into your pants. You find yourself heartbroken. You say, how did that happen? Anytime you step over your boundaries and step over your standards, you'll find yourself heartbroken and you will lose your purity. Protect your standards. Protect your principles. Be like Boaz. Saying, you know what? As much as I like you, this is great, but I gotta check with God's word. You know what? I gotta check if you go to church. I gotta check if you even know Christ. I mean, I don't hate on you or anything. I'm not racist, none of that stuff. But it's just, I gotta honor my principles. Why? Because that's how I stay pure and that's how I stay protected. Come on, somebody. This is good preaching right there. Dating is like driving. There's four things I want you to remember about dating and driving. And number one is that in order to drive, you have to have a license. In order to date, you have to be of certain age. Mm -hmm. Nobody drives just because you know how to drive. Now, just because you have a need for speed or some other app that you have on your phone where you're actually driving, that does not qualify you for driving. Just because your parents let you back out your car, is their car from the garage into the driveway, it doesn't give you a permission to drive on the road. Just because you have attraction for someone, it doesn't give you a right to date. Did he just say that? I did. Just because we fell in love, you're 15, you don't even know what that is. Just because you got the feelings raging and you're losing sleep and you pulse and you're sweating around that person and you start to stutter around the person, it does not mean you are licensed by God to date. You say, so when do I date? I'm going to give you an answer you're not going to like to hear. Whenever you're ready for marriage. Wow, this guy is old school. Mm-hmm. You want to avoid heartbreak, unwanted pregnancy, sexual transmitted diseases, demons that we pick up from other people who are not walking with the Lord. I'm going to give you one secret. One secret. Make a standard for yourself that if you're not ready for marriage, you're not ready for dating. That's all. Otherwise, you're dating for what? For fun. If you want to have fun, get a hobby. If you want to have fun, hike Badger Mountain. If you want to have fun, get swimming lessons. If you want to get fun, get a job. If you want to get fun, get a dog, get a cat, get a friend for crying out loud. I mean, get, a, get involved in the church. If you want to have fun, you don't use another person's heart for fun. Are you dating is like driving, number two. Dating is like driving you need a car you can have a license actually but if you don't have a working car you can drive correct so just because it's the right time for you to date it doesn't necessarily mean you should be dating if you are a wreck in a sense if you're heartbroken right now you've been through abuse you've been a heartbreak or maybe somebody broke your heart or you're emotionally really really just just you're going through something very difficult right now it's not a right place to go in into dating this is this is the devil's lie listen to me very carefully and it will save you years and hundreds of dollars from counseling this is the lie of the devil when you're hurting get a get a person to date why so that it will fix you it's kind of like this your car has a running oil Okay, I mean, you're coming out and the oil is just dripping from the car. Like, if I just get it on the road, it will fix itself. Now, only girls can say that, right? <laughs> Who have no idea how cars work. Nobody in the right mind will know that the car doesn't get fixed because you took it on the road. Actually, the car breaks down more if you take it on the road. If you say that, I know I'm hurting. I know I've been rejected. I know I've never had a dad in my life. I know that my ex-boyfriend cheated on me. I know that this has happened to me. So if I just find me another guy, I will be automatically fixed. You're being lied to. You're being deceived. You're actually getting on the road without a tire. You're getting on the road with a broken, broken vehicle. Your experience is not going to be enjoyable and it's not because you don't have a license. It's because you're a mess. Get yourself turned into a body shop 
into a mechanic, the Holy Ghost, and have the Holy Ghost tweak certain things, adjust certain things, put some oil inside of you, put some gas inside of you, put some AC inside of you, and fix you up a little bit. So when you go into a dating, you don't go to look for a Messiah, you look for a boyfriend. Come on, somebody. Number three. Dating is like driving in the sense that you have to have a license. Number two is that you have to have a working car. And number three, you have to have a road to drive on. Roads, the more expensive your car is, the more you need a road to ride on instead of a gravel, a lawn, or your backyard, right? If you have a really, really expensive car, you can't drive that car anywhere and everywhere. You have to have a paved road. You have to have it where it's a pavement, where there's concrete or, or where there is asphalt. You have to have a specific road. For us in dating, the road is purity. That means you can be all good yourself. You can, it can be your right time to date. But honestly, if you start taking your relationship and your heart on the grave, on the gravel, I'm sorry, on the gravel of compromise, you will find very soon your heart be broken. You will find your tires popping. You will find the paint peeling. You will find rocks hitting your hood. You will find smoke. You will find, you will find a lot of uncomfortable things. You're like, man, but it was my right time. I was in a healthy position. You have to understand, just because you're a pr proper vehicle, you got a proper edific, uh, license, that does not mean you have to take this into a gravel or a country road. You got to stay on the purity, on the path of purity. Are you with me? Come on, yes. Dating is like dr driving, fourthly is that you have to follow the signs. When you get on the road, you don't do what you want to do. You got to follow the signs. I mean, there are signs like yield. So when you start dating, you got to yield to God. Come on, somebody. There's a dating call. Uh, there is a sign on the road called speed limit. That means when you're dating, that means you got to reduce how many text messages you send to the other person a day. Come on. Amen. <laughs> you got to reduce how much time you spend with them a day. That means speed limit. That means you can't isolate your whole family and your friends because you got that boyfriend or you got that girlfriend and pretend the world doesn't exist because they exist. You got to have a speed limit. You can't push the pedal to the metal. You got to slow it down, honey. Slow down. There's also another sign called do not enter. What does that mean? There are certain places you don't enter within the other person until you are married. There's, there are signs. One of the signs that we have right now on the road is called uh, don't text and drive. Why? You're going to watch a video that's behind me on what happens when you text and drive. When you text and drive, you get distracted. When you text and drive, you get into an accident. I'm going to show you. Texting. And driving this is what happens when you break the rules now whoever invented the rule for you not to text and drive they did not want to take your phone away they wanted you to drive not into your graveyard but into your destination right I am an experienced broker of the law I have under my belt two accidents from texting and driving one happened seven years ago and one happened nine years ago. So I have the authority to speak to you about this. This can wait. When you're driving, this can wait. Anytime you lie to yourself and you say, no, it can't. That Instagram, whoever liked my Instagram, if I don't find out who liked my latest Instagram picture, I am going to have a heart attack. If I don't find out what that person texted me on my Snapchat, I am literally, my, my heart is going to stop beating. If, if I don't get it right now, no, you have to tell yourself this, this can wait. Same thing in dating. Sex and getting physical can wait Come on. until you get to the destination of the altar call. Come on. And if you say simply, no, 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 it can't wait. We got to have it right now. The devil is a liar. This is exactly what's going to happen to you. Come on, somebody. And people sometimes say, but you don't understand, but we know we're going to marry each other. We, we can see the wedding from here already, where, where, when it's going to happen. So it allows us the freedom to do that. Well, <laughs> you know, I have a house and in my house we have a fireplace. I can see the fireplace. Imagine if I would take the fire from the fireplace and simply say, it's still the same fire, the same house. I'm just going to take it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten feet away from the fireplace. It's still the same house. It's still the same fire. The same beautiful fire. 
10 feet from the fireplace will set my house on fire <laughs> and we will have a big problem okay when God puts physical relationship in marriage he puts it for your protection when God says this can wait when you're dating he's not trying to steal your fun he just wants you when you get fun you actually keep having fun without all kinds of complications and problems that will follow when you start to get this while you are driving young people I want to encourage you God loves you so much and that's why he invented purity and that's why he created principles not to steal your fun not to steal your joy but to protect your heart from being broken and protect your future from being ripped apart by sin and Satan are you with me if you want to live pure honor your standards protect your standards let no fool I don't care if that's some basketball player a football player I don't care what car his parents drive that he picks you on on listen you gotta keep your standards and if he doesn't honor your standards you call police oh, but if you love me you would do it if you love me you'll get a job put a ring on it and take me to the altar and so I just wanted to um, I have one more thing that I want to share but, but for the lack of time I'm gonna land the plane uh, right on this God wants you to live your life with the purpose God wants you to live your life with his presence and God wants you to live your life also with purity I've been I'm 31 years of age became a youth pastor, youth pastor at 16 and you know when I got married at 24 I was married and I was a virgin I lived in the world just the same as you do was it easy for me no but I can tell you one thing that it was worth it today I'm married to a very very beautiful young lady and I enjoy all the benefits and I enjoy all the blessings of, of that marriage for many of you maybe that's not your story you say Vlad I blew it already when you came to Christ God resets the clock from that point on begin to live as though you've never sinned again begin to live holy begin to set your standards up begin to spend your weekends not in the clubs where most likely you're not going to find the Holy Ghost but you're going to find some other ghosts who are going to take stuff from you you begin to come to night prayer when you have free time begin to come to church on, sun on Sunday begin to join the home group begin to get your life in line with God's Word and God's principles so that the Holy Spirit can use you You are worthy of it all to the Lord right now just open up your heart welcome the presence of Jesus in this room right now welcome his presence and his anointing Holy Spirit comes when we exalt Jesus and when Holy Spirit comes miracles happen bondages are broken chains are broken in Jesus name as we're gonna continue to worship I feel strongly in my spirit there are people here who are fighting strongly with anxiety or depression, uncertainty of future. There's some people here even there's tragic things that have been happening to you in the last few months and it's been weighing you down. There's something that's constantly weighing you down. And in this service the Holy Spirit wants to take care of that. He wants to remove that right now. He wants to break that right now over your life. There's some of you you're even contemplating the thoughts of death and you had nightmares that constantly keep reoccurring some of you are graduating right now and there is that pressure and there is that confusion about what to do, where to go. That panic and that fear that's come on you. And today Jesus wants to meet you at the point of your need and He wants to solve the problem. If you're one of those people that I just mentioned, as they're going to sing, I want you to quickly come out of your seat and we're going to minister to you. If you're simply saying, you know, Vlad, I've been going through stuff right now. I just need some prayer tonight. I just need somebody to agree with me. Just quickly come out of your seat.
quickly just quickly we're gonna pray with you right now we're gonna believe that that heaviness is gonna be gone we're gonna believe that that anxiety is gonna be gone we're gonna believe that the Holy Spirit is gonna move right now in your life just quickly come and just stand right here if I can ask our team if our team can come out the home group leaders could come out to minister Maria Larissa Lana and others if you can come out Sylvia and others if you can come up quickly if there is a spirit of depression, if there is a spirit of anxiety that's attacking you, quickly run to the front. If there have been nightmares of Satan has bound you with drugs or cigarettes and you're tired of it, you want to be free, run to Jesus. Run to God right now. There is freedom that exists for you. Jesus made this meeting for you. This is a miracle catch where you will catch your miracle. Begin to cry out to the Holy Spirit. Come on, everyone from the back, every person from the back to the front. Begin to just seek the Lord right now. Next few minutes, come on, begin to press in. You're not here just to meet other people, you're here to encounter God. You're here to meet real God who answers real prayers, who does real miracles, who moves real, real mountains, who kills real diseases. He is right now in this place. He wants to encounter you. He wants just open yourself up and say, God, I need you. Come on.
tangible presence of the Holy Spirit in this room right now. Just let it go to Him, everything. Everything that you kept carrying, the weighting it down, just let it go right now. Say, Holy Spirit, I give it to you right now. My future and my past, I give it to you right now in Jesus' name. Come on. Jesus reigns supreme in this room. Jesus reigns supreme in this room. Every spirit of depression, every spirit of anxiety, every spirit of suicide, every spirit of alcohol and drugs is being broken right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of heaviness is leaving right now because Jesus reigns supreme in this room right now. Repeated diseases and, and accidents are being broken right now because Jesus reigns supreme right now in this room. Come on church, for those of you who baptize in the Holy Spirit, for the next 60 seconds, open up your mouth, pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Something is about to shift in the atmosphere. Something is about to shift in the atmosphere. Something is about to happen in the atmosphere. Let's begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Begin to release the sound of heaven out of your spirit. Begin to let the Holy Ghost pray through you. For those of you who have never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, just open up your lips and let Holy Spirit flow through you. Let Holy Spirit pray through you. Let Holy Spirit give you the words you don't have. Let Holy Spirit give you the passion you lack. Let Him give you fire you need. Let Him give you the strength you need right now. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks. What matters is the Holy Ghost right now. say this with me say oh Holy Spirit I receive what Jesus did on the cross I receive my freedom from every depression every anxiety every confusion every guilt and shame I leave that at the cross I receive my victory I receive my peace I receive my joy I receive my righteousness I receive my inheritance in Jesus name say you devil you are leaving right now you are being broken right now in the presence of the Holy Spirit I'm becoming new see my situation is being changed I'm receiving a miracle in Jesus name those of you who are sick I want you to place your hand upon the part of your body where there is pain and just believe right now that the Lord wants to touch you and right there where you are standing the Holy Spirit is standing next to you and he wants to heal you right now in the name of Jesus I command that pain to leave right now in Jesus name in the name of Jesus I command that pain in that part of the body right now in the ligaments in the joints in the blood and the bones in the skin whatever pain whatever whatever it lodged itself in Jesus mighty name be gone right now whatever sport injury that you received in school or at work in Jesus mighty name let that restoration come to your body right now be healed in Jesus name some of you feel heat in your body the part where you have your hand right now that is the, that's that's holy spirit that's the fire of god and that means that god is removing that right now god is canceling the assignment of the enemy and god is bringing healing somebody has you have a problem with your stomach you, have, you actually have a pain in your stomach right now god is healing you right now god is touching your stomach right now in jesus name just receive receive the fire of the holy ghost receive god's healing in jesus mighty name in the name of jesus somebody has a problem with their neck the upper neck 
neck part of your neck God is healing that right now in Jesus mighty name in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you that you are our healer and our restorer we yield to you we surrender to you we welcome you and we need you Lord and we promise to follow you for the rest of our days and the rest of our life in the name of Jesus we pray in Jesus name we ask amen for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come